Hi, this is Dr. Fry, and this is my chapter eight uh, genetics problem. So this will be the first uh, video of two. And we are going to go over different uh, genetic problems. I'm going to work these genetic problems for you, and then I'm going to give you some for homework. Uh, so the first one is sort of Mendelian genetics. Um, this is complete dominance. So this is when the dominant allele is completely dominant over the recessive allele. And here you have homozygous dominant. Here you have heterozygous, and here if you have homozygous recessive, but you only have two phenotypes, right? So as long as it has a big A, <clears throat> it's going to have this dominant phenotype. But not all of <coughs> not all genes follow the uh, Mendelian genetics, and so we have co-dominance, incomplete dominance, multiple alleles, linked, uh, sex linked, and pedigrees. So. Um, the co-dominance here is where these are both dominant, right? So the white cow is dominant <coughs> and the red cow is dominant. But when you have heterozygous here, you're gonna have a red and white cow. So here you have three phenotypes and you have three, three, three genotypes and three phenotypes. And incomplete dominance is similar to co-dominance. This is sort of patchy. You can think of things being patchy. This is where you have a completely different um, phenotype. So here, the dominant red flower, the dominant color is red, and also the dominant color is white. And then when you have those two um, heterozygous, you actually have a different phenotype, which is pink, which is sort of a mixing. But again, this is sort of patchy, and this is mixing. And then uh, in the next video, we'll do multiple allele sex links and pedigrees. So I'll go ahead and get started here. So um, here it says a heterozygous round seed. So this is heterozygous, right? So it's big R, little r, is crossed with a heterozygous round seed plant. So you have two heterozygous seeds. And it says round seeds are completely dominant to wrinkled seeds. So here you're gonna have big R equals Big R Big R Once again. Big R is equal um, to round and little R equals wrinkled. All right. And again, she's heterozygous and she's diploid, right? So she has two, two alleles. So she, we have 23 pairs. So say this is on the 21st pair. One chromosome is going to have a big R. The other chromosome is going to have a little R. And then when that goes through meiosis, she's going to be haploid. So she can only give one of those. But she can actually give big R or she can give little r. And the same good thing goes for this parent here. They can either give a big R or a little r. And again, these are the gametes right here. So these are considered gametes. And then, so this one, each parent here is going to give a big R. One parent's going to give a big R. The other parent's going to give a little r. All right, and so now it's gonna ask you for the genotype ratios. And basically you're gonna have one big R, big R, two heterozygous, and one homozygous recessive. So that is what I got right here. And then since this is complete dominance, we are going to have three round, to one wrinkled, right? So as long as it has a big R, it's gonna be round, and this is the only one that's gonna be wrinkled. Okay. All right, so this is another one. So a heterozygous round seed plant is crossed with a homozygous round seed plant. Round seeds are completely dominant to wrinkle seeds. 
So again, I will put this up here. So R R equals round and little r equals wrinkled. And so it says, so you're going to do a heterozygous. So again, the her gametes are going to be big R, little r. And this parent is actually homozygous round. So he's going to be, this one's going to be big R, big R. And now you're going to fill those in. So each parent here is going to give a big R. One parent's going to be a big R. And this could be a little r. Both parents here are going to give a big R. And one parent here is going to be a big R, little r. All right. So now we're going to come up here and do the genotypes. So now you are going to have two big R, big R, two, two, big R, little r. Or you could also say that's one to one, right? So there's 50% big R, big R, and 50% homo uh, heterozygous. And now the phenotypes now, you are going to have two, you're actually going to have you're going to have four round seeds, right? Or 100% round seed, because they all have a big R. All right. All right, so um, this one's a little more complicated. So in humans, the ability to roll one's tongue is dominant to the ability to, to not do so. Okay, so I'm going to make um, big R is dominant. So that's going to be for rolled tongue. And little r is going to be not rolled. Okay. So a man is a non-roller. So I'm going to make the man square. And he is non-rolled, which means he is going to be little r. Okay, um, but whose parents are both rollers. So he has two parents. So I'm going to make the mom circular. I'm going to make the dad square. Okay, and then I'm going to put, this is basically a pedigree is what this is I'm making here. And then that's going to be his son. All right, and then it says, um, whose both parents are rollers, so they are going to be big R, and this one's also going to be big R, and, um, <clears throat> but he marries a woman who is a roller, so he's going to marry a woman over here, I'm going to put her over here, and she's going to be a roller, so she's going to be a big R, circle around her. <clears throat> and then, okay, so marries a woman who is a roller, who, who has a sister who is a non-roller. So, um, so she's going to have a sister who's a non-roller. So she's going to be a little r. And I'm going to put a circle around her. And these are sisters, so I'm going to show that by, by doing this. <clears throat> okay. 
And the woman's mother is a non-roller, but her father is a roller. So I'm going to put, um, so the mother is a non-roller. So she is going to be a little R. I'm going to put a circle around her. And um, the dad is a roller. So he's going to be a capital R. And he is going to be a roller. So he's capital R. And then... Okay, so make sure I got that right. So a man who is a non-roller, he's going to be small r, but whose parents are both rollers, so they're going to be big r, big r, marries a woman who is a roller, so this is who he married to, she's a big r, who has a sister who is a non-roller, she's going to be a little r. Uh, the woman's mother is a non-roller, but the father is a roller. Okay, so... This is so then it says, what are the genotypes for all the people mentioned? And so I'm going to make this red, hopefully. OK, so since these two are rollers, but they have and you know, this is complete dominance, but they have a non roller son, you know that they have to be heterozygous. Because in this case, they both gave their son here this little r. And he has to have these two little r's, so you know all of these are, this is uh, recessive, so you know these all have to be, this one has to be little r, little r. And this one here has to be little r, little r. So you know all of those are little r, little r's. And so um, he married her. So, um, so this, um, so now, you know, this one's a little R, little R, but in order for them to have a, to have a daughter that's little R, little R, this one had to give a little R. So he has to be big R, little R. And you know that she is also heterozygous because the only uh, allele that this one can give is a little R. So this one is going to be big R, little R. So that's the answer to that question there. So what are the genotypes of all the people mentioned? Okay, so um, I'll switch this back to black. All right, so that's all I'm gonna do for complete dominance. Um, so codominance is when both alleles are expressed in heterozygous, and I'll give you some examples here. Okay, so in shorthorn cattle, when a red bull is crossed with a white cow, all of the offspring are roan, a spotted red or white or milky red. What phenotypes would you expect from the cross between a red bull and a white cow? So here's the red bull. This is actually a red bull too. And then this is a roan cow, right? So this is patchy. But they gave you the genotypes. So he can only give a big R. And this is going to be W. And then you'll do that cross. So this will be RW. E R W E R W E R W, and so the phenotype here is going to be all roan cows, right? And roan cows are this right here. Okay, so that's that one. Okay, so in shorthorn cattle, where the red bull is crossed with the white cow, all of the offspring are roed, a spotted red or milky red color. What offspring is expected from mating a roan bull with a roan cow? So the roan bull and the roan cow are going to be heterozygous, right? So that, that was the offspring of these two crosses up here. So they can either give a red...
Why is that not working? You can either give, um, so the offspring is going to be, of those is going to be RW and Let's try this again. And this is going to be an R, and this is going to be a W. And then if you cross these, this is going to be an R, W. And this one is going to be an R, W. And this one's going to be an R, I'm sorry, R, W. This one's going to be an R, R, right? Let me erase that. All right, so this one's going to be an RR, and this one is going to be a WW. Okay, so now you're going to have the genotypes up here. So you're going to have a one RR to Two R W to one W. So that's a one to two to one. And then for the phenotype, you're going to have one red to two brown to one white. To one, this is this. white. That should be one white down there. Okay, so that's that one. Okay, the next one is um, talking about codominance, and this is blood types. Uh, so you can have uh, a blood type, right? So here's a blood type, and you actually have the anti the anti B antibody. You can have a okay. I'm sorry. So you can have an A. You can have a B blood type where you have the antigen for the B, and that is anti A antibody. And then this is the co dominant one here. So this is type A B, and then type zero has both antibodies. Um, but they don't have any, um, they don't have any antigens on here. So this is red blood cells, right? So this is red blood cells. So type A can have anything with a um, B in it, right? So type A cannot, I mean, they cannot have B or AB. They can't have anything with B in it, but they can have type A or O. And type B cannot have anything with A in it. They can't have A or AB, but it can have B or O. And type AB can have any type of blood. And this is the universal reciprocant. So this can get, um, it can get blood type A, B, or zero if you're going to get a transfusion. And um, then this one has neither antibodies or antigens. And so it will have both antibodies, but it can have, uh, but it can only have type O blood but it is a universal donor. So I'm actually type O here and I should give blood more often, but I don't. So um, so that's the idea, but this is the idea of codominance right here. This is the codominant one. 
Okay. So in a case of disputed paternity, the mother belongs to group B, the child to zero, and one possible father to, to A and the other to AB. Which one is the true father of the child? Okay. So, okay. So you say the mother is B, right? So the mother is B. And if the child is zero, then she is going to have to be um, B zero. Because in order for this child to be zero, it has to have both type zeros. So she's going to have to give a zero, type O. And then um, the father, so if the father, so one possible father is A, the other possible father is AB. So if the father is AB, you're never going to get a child that is zero, zero because this child here is zero, zero. So I'll put that here. So the child's genotype, because the child has a genotype of zero, zero. So that's what you're looking for right here. So there's no way that he can give a zero. So there's no way the child could be zero, zero. So he cannot be the father. So, um, but, a could actually be A0. And then you actually, this child here would be 0, 0, right? And so he, this one could potentially be the father. Uh, this one could not be potentially be the father. Um, so the answer here is the father would be A. So he would be A. All right. Okay, so here's the next problem. In humans, A blood type is called by the antigen A in the red blood cells resulting from gene A. Type B is caused by gene B for antigen B. Type 0 blood results in the absence of either gene, while the presence of both genes cause both antigens to be formed, resulting in a type AB blood. If a person of a blood group AB marries one belonging to blood O, what will be the blood groups of their children? Show the Punnett square for this cross. All right, so um, it gave you the parents. So one is AB. And the other one is zero. So zero is recessive. So it's going to be zero, zero. And then you're going to do that cross. Okay, and then show the Punnett square. So what will be the blood groups of their children? <coughs> so the children will be <coughs> uh, two type A. And two type these are dominant because these are dominant right okay all right so um so that is it i think that's it for oh this is incomplete dominant okay so that was co-dominant so now we're going to do um complete dominant incomplete dominance and i only have a couple for this but the one that most people look at are snapdragons. So 
the dominant is red and the recessive is white. And then so the uh, homozygous dominant is going to be red. A heterozygous is going to be pink. And a, uh, ho and a homozygous recessive is going to be white. So we're going to cross these two snapdragons. And the, the only allele that this parent can give is a, is a big R, big R. And this one can give a little R, little R. And then we're going to do that cross. And then the genotypes here will be four heterozygotes. You're going to have um, four big R, little r. And the phenotypes will be all pink. Because okay, heterozygotes are pink here. So they're going to be all pink. And this is another example of incomplete dominance. Um, and so this is a labradoodle. And so labradoodles are a cross between a lab and a poodle. And uh, generally, and this is what the puppy will look like. And these are very popular because they have the, they're, they're bred to have sort of the um, temperament of a lab, which everybody likes, but they don't shed. So, um, so you don't get hair in your house. And so curly hair is actually dominant over straight hair. And then it says, what are the genotypes and phenotypes of the texture of the offspring if you cross a homozygous female poodle with a male Labrador, with a male Labrador? All right, so he has straight hair, right? So you know that he is little h, little h. This is going to be the dad. And she has curly hair, so she's going to be big H, big H. And then you're going to do that cross. And so what you're going to do is you're going to get wavy hair here, right? So it doesn't look exactly like the mom and it doesn't look exactly like the dad, but the genotypes are going to be four heterozygotes. And the phenotypes are going to be um, wavy hair. But the, generally, they want them not to shed, right? So, you, so people can have a Labrador, basically, that doesn't shed. So they're crossing it with a poodle, so basically it doesn't shed. So that's incomplete dominance, right? Because the because the offspring actually doesn't have curly hair like the poodle, but it doesn't have straight hair. It has wavy hair. Okay. So this is another example of incomplete dominance. Um, so in horses, some of the genes for hair color are incompletely dominant. Genotypes are as follows. Brown horses are BB, white, capital B, capital B. They're dominant. White horses are recessive. And the heterozygous genotypes creates basically a palomino that is kind of light colored and it has a white mane and tail. So this should say show the genetic crosses between the following horses and record the genotypes and phenotypes for each cross. So they told you what the what the brown horse was. So I'll put him over here. So that's big B. Back to that. To be little W. Yeah, so let me, 
Let me see if I can do this. So this will be a uh, big B. And big B. And white is going to be little B and little B. And then if you do those crosses, you're going to get big B, little B, big B, little B, big B, little B, and big B, little B. And so the genotype here is going to be four heterozygous, right? So you're going to have four. And the phenotype is they're all going to be palomino. So you're going to get four uh, palominos, which is this horse right here, or roan horse. Like you call them different, whatever you want to call them. But all right, that should be a palomino. All right, so now you're going to cross a brown with a palomino. So um, this is going to be a big B. And this is going to be a big B. And a palomino is going to be heterozygous. So that's going to be a big B and a little b. And now you're going to cross those. It's going to be a big B, little b. And this is going to be a big B, little b. Okay, so now the genotypes here, you are going to have two big B, big B, two two big B, little b. And the phenotypes, you're going to have um, two brown to two uh, palomino. Okay, so that's that one there. And here you're going to cross a palomino with a palomino. So you're going to have two heterozygotes. So that's uh, going to be a big B and a little b and a big B and a little b and then you're going to cross those this is going to be a big b big b a big b little b a big b little b and a little b little b right okay so now the genotypes here you're going to have one big b big b to two heterozygotes to one little b little b and then the phenotypes here you're going to have one brown horse to two palominos to one white All right so these are going to be this one's going to be brown these are going to be palominos and this is going to be white okay All right, so that's it for this one. And the next uh, uh, video, I'm going to do uh, these three. So that's it for now.